What is your top priority right now in Washington? Well, I'm on uh, two committees. One is education and labor, and then the other is homeland. And my top priority, honestly, is to curb the number of illegal uh, immigrants coming across the border. Because it's going to tax our health care system, it's going to tax our educational system. It's a problem. Right, so you've sort of got that on both sides with the education as well as that immigration yeah. issue. Mm -hmm. um, I, this morning I, I watched um, sort of like a, a little social media thing with a reporter on the border mm -hmm. who was showing that memorial for the, I believe it's 50 plus people who died yeah. on that tractor trailer. I mean, yeah, they were what, locked in. what is your, you know, opinion, takeaway, comment on, on that kind of situation? Well, from what I understand, and we'll get a briefing when I go back uh, this week, but they locked those illegals in a tractor trailer. They evidently painted it like some of the, the trucks that come and go. And, um, you know, you've got you to look at who you're dealing with. You're looking to deal with those cartels, and they don't have any respect for human life. I mean, it's up to $6,000 a head. That's just for the illegals wanting to come in. And we're getting them from all over the world, not just a few countries, all over the world. And if you are Chinese immigrant, uh, uh, illegal trying to get in, it could go to fifty to 75000 It is unconscionable how they treat these people, what they're doing to these people, and it is not safe. Nobody wants to talk about the number of people that have died under this Biden administration trying to cross the border. And what they do to those unaccompanied children is unspeakable. But the recession, inflation, food mm -hmm. shortages, I mean, we're talking like once in a generation kind of projections yeah. that these economists mm -hmm. are projecting for us. What mm -hmm. kind of, is, what are House Republicans, what is your office sort of doing, looking into to help Northeast Tennesseans? Well, I mean, Stop giving out free money. They act like it's play money, monopoly money. Let's just give, give, give. Nothing is free, period. And somebody's paying for it. And when we flood the market with cash, of course inflation goes up. And inflation is taxation. When people pay more at the gas pump, when people pay more at the grocery store, that's another form of taxation. And you know, if you wanna fix it, stop spending money that we don't have. You don't do it, I don't do it as a family or a business. If we don't have it and can't pay for it, we don't get it. And bottom line, um, you know, th this is just, uh, they're enabling a whole society to stay at home and reap what they can off the government's dime. And it's, uh, you know, I, I'm working, you know, my family still works, so, you know, stop, stop the spending. And uh, why don't we just uh, make the permitting and leasing of uh, lands for energy? You know, this administration's not anti-energy, they're anti-American energy. And why don't we open that back up so we can drive the gas prices down? That's gonna help because an average, a family will spend another almost 3,000 for gas that they didn't expect, same as last year and then another 6,000 just to put food on the table, if you can find it, because there's food insecurities as well. Let's talk about what is going on in Congress right now following that Roe v. Wade decision, but what's really going on up there? Well, I, you know, I applaud the, dis the reversal of the decision Roe v. Wade, and you know, it, it was unconstitutional in the first place, and they rectified a wrong that's been going on for 50 years. And it's back at the state level where it should be and where it should have been. Now, what's coming this week, from what I understand today, is there are going to be two bills that we will have to vote on. One is abortion up until the moment the child is born, and the other is, um, you know, it's, it's enabling women to get abortions across state lines and not impeding a health care provider if they want to give that. You know, it, there's a lot of crazy things. You are correct, no matter what side you stand on. You know, I stand on the side of life. And if you look in the Constitution, you will see the word life at least two times. And uh, those unborn children need someone to stand up and be their voice. And that's what I'm doing. What about those kind of conversations with the doctor kind of abortions? Are well, those some things that might be protected or even discussed in Congress? Well, I'm sure that, you know, at the state level, I think Tennessee has, if the life of the mother is an endangered, of course, they're, they're, they will allow abortion. Now, what the states will do is, is anybody's guess, you know, but what we have to look at is what is the will of the people in that state? That's what the legislature 
has to do. They have to, to thread that needle and look at what they want to do. And every life is valuable. You know, you think about some of the children with Down syndrome and some of the other issues when children are born. What a blessing they are later on. God loved them, you know. I'm just here to stand up at a federal level for the rights of the unborn and the uh, state will take care of, of itself based on what the people want. Any thoughts on the January 6th hearings? Well, you're only here on one side, aren't you? And in November, I, I've talked to uh, Jim Jordan on ju uh, judiciary and also on oversight, uh, James Comer, and they will go back through and they will do a rendering. And it's kind of like a uh, cross-examination. They want to look at what's been said and what's been done, the witnesses they've called, and then they will do their own oversight, basically. It, it's unbelievable that you only hear one side. No, no other questions. You're just supposed to uh, take what they say or what the witnesses say at their word. And that's all fine and well, but cross-examination would uncover a whole lot of things that the American people probably need to know. How are House Republicans working to, to be more uh, bipartisan, to get that work across the aisle? A little well, bit? It's, it's not that the Republicans are not trying. Believe me, we are. And the first bill I fa passed was a bipartisan bill. And it had to do with Homeland Security. If you can't be bipartisan on Homeland, where can you be bipartisan? And the beautiful thing is uh, we reach out, and as long as it pushes this district or this country forward, it doesn't matter what's behind their name. I will listen to them, and we will work through that. Um, but it's the other side's been told, do not speak with the Republicans. And this came from Democrats' own mouths. So it's hard to carry on a good conversation when their leadership won't allow them to even have a conversation with the other side. Any broadband upgrades to Northeast Tennessee that is, might be in the future? Oh, rural broadband is uh, its absolutely a necessity. We saw that during COVID when school children in rural areas couldn't download the lessons. You know, um, you've got telehealth is here to stay. Let's make sure that everybody has access, and, but do it right. Make sure that it's, it's uh, rural broad broadband that we can all live with. And, the sooner the better. So I'm in the Rural Broadband Caucus in, in Washington, and we are pushing in every way, shape, and form to get those um, companies. And I have honestly went and looked at some of the local facilities that will instill the broadband, and it's pretty remarkable what they've done so far. So we're all about pushing it. Uh, telehealth's here to stay. We need that access for these rural areas. So I'll do whatever I can to bring it to East Tennessee.